Hey there everybody, it's Ryan from Cataclysm Now. Tonight we've got a quick unboxing uh, for Ted Racer's most recent design, The Deadly Woods Battle of the Bulge uh, by Revolution Games. Uh, I only have one other Revolution Games title, Fury at Midway. Um, I really liked it. Um, it's got nice components, um, well-written rules. Um, I've been trying and not necessarily succeeding, but trying to branch out to smaller publishers. Um, I feel like I've got just so many GMT titles, not just owned, but pre-ordered. Um, and so I'm working on not just branching out to say like MMP or Worthington, but also branching out to smaller uh, ones. Um, I know Holland Spiel, Revolution Games. Um, so I've been trying to branch out and um, when I heard that uh, Ted was doing a, a continuation of his Dark series, essentially um, using the chip activation system for the Battle of the Bulge, um, I couldn't say no. So here we have it. Arrived sooner uh, than expected, which is no complaint at all. I really, really love the um, the art here on the front. Um, kind of stoic and, uh, yeah, kind of creepy and haunting. Fits the title of Deadly Woods. Um, I also like the, I like how this is uh, divided here, but we see, um, can't tell if it's, this is a, uh, looks like probably German mortar crew here. Anyway, let's pop her open. All right, we've got player aid showing a broad range of information, combat units, assets, unit types, um, what the different things mean on the board, entry hexes, Reinforcement ID, the different cores. Um, I really like this. This is something that I still struggle with, um, just from a memorization point of view. But um, one thing uh, one thing I've really really enjoyed about getting into military uh, conflict simulation uh, war games, it's really helping me grasp military history when I read it in terms of the unit sizes and how everything. Um, relates to each other in terms of command structure. And I think that's, that's it really, really helps me. But I, I also like it that it reminds me that, uh, you know, uh, wrote two Roman numeral ones, that's battalion, regiment, brigade. I got division and corps and army down, but I still get confused with those. So that is um, really, really interesting. Cause I also like just, I, I like to see the, to know and to recognize the unit sizes as they're moving across the board and get a sense of how many men are on each uh, counter. It, just, it really helps with uh, the narrative, building any narrative. Anyway, so that's the, the player aid, one of them. And then we've got two more because it's obviously a two player game. I play most of my games solitaire um, for a, a myriad of reasons, um, but obviously there's two here. So we'll take a look at this one first, the uh, combat results table. Let's see. Standard sort of odds. We've got uh, attacker loses a step, DRs. There's sort of an ex not a full exchange, but so it seems to be there's a fair amount of gradation there. Um, doesn't seem to be all or nothing. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't read the rules because they were never posted online. Um, but from what I can pick up here, it seems to be a, sort of a bell curve of um, odds or a bell curve of losses. Here we've got a uh, train effects chart. Looks like there's some sort of column shifts for advantageous um, terrain for the defender. On the other side is an action chip summary. This will be handy. Um, like I said, this is chit pull. So depending on the chit that you pull, uh, there's different actions you can take. All right, let's see if we can move these. Next, we have the rules. They are 22 pages, 20 pages, the index, there's some designer notes here. Um, the Revolution games, they don't tend to be illustrated um, very well. 
or, or at all really. I mean, there's, you know, showing what a, a zone of control is, but I think most of us already know that. Um, so I anticipate learning this to be maybe a little more difficult, not saying it will be necessarily difficult, but compared to other companies that have, um, extended examples of play, um, I'm sure they actually have one right now here, but it'd be a little harder without the illustrations, but, um, I imagine there will be also a little bits of Chrome and additional rules as well, um, specifically for the battle. All right, and then we have uh, action shit availability, basically how the uh, cups are to be populated as the turns go on, which is to be expected. Next are the counters. Um, I like the I like the color scheme. We'll pull out the map here, um, but I like the. Uh, this sort of muted green for the Americans, and then um, we expect the Germans to be uh, in gray as well. These are the action shits. Uh, mo uh, most of this, the size of the game are um, it's regiments and battalions, so it's on that level, uh, as opposed to the Worthington game that I just recently played, which was on the divisional scale. Uh, and then we've got some British here. Some uh, bridge destroyed markers. I know that the um, the Americans will be able to destroy bridges to hold up the the Germans. Next, we have. I will say that um, these are these seem to be nice thick counters. Next um, setup map. So, uh, and I believe. Um, this is for, well, obviously setting up the game, but instead of populating this information on the map um, specifically, uh, I think the Ted uh, Racer opted to, to have a separate sheet here um, so they can you know, populate it. Lastly, we go to the map and then I'll comment on some of the uh, design uh, choices that uh, Ted made. I was uh, conversing with him uh, a bit on Twitter um, about the scale of the game and the scope. Um, apologies for the glare here. I've got, I'm not filming on my usual table. I've got another game set up, so I have to do it here on the kitchen. Um, but it has to do with the scale. So um, I think a lot of bulge games, um, there's obviously a lot of them, but a lot of bulge games cover the first part of um, the battle. So the battle starts on December 16th and essentially the, the peak of the German advance is right around Christmas time. And a lot of games, um, from my impression, end around there. But Ted specifically wanted to extend the game into mid-January. So it encompasses the Allied counterattack. Um, so obviously, geographically here, we have the West Wall um, and the Germans are launching their offensive uh, through the Ardennes Forest and they're essentially trying to cross the River Meuse at some point. Um, the apex of their advance uh, is just east of the Meuse at Dinant, um, but this map covers not just obviously the West Wall over here, but even covers Sedan down here in the lower left which is historically where um, the Germans initially crossed in 1940. Um, they, they are trying to angle up more to the uh, northwest and crossing around Nimur or Liege because um, their, their goal is Antwerp and not necessarily down here. That all being said, um, Ted wanted to cover the entire offensive. So not only to give the Germans or the Allies the chance to absorb the attack, but also to coordinate their own counterattack. So both sides get to play offense and defense, and it also prevents the Germans from, you know, manipulating the victory conditions in a way where they're just going for broke, 
not caring about casualties, just trying to achieve their um, their victory points um, without regard to what comes the day after, you know, uh, uh, the offensive. So it is 12 turns. It goes all the way up to January 15th, so it's a whole month. Um, so I, that was another thing that drew me to the game is, is the scale. It's not just covering the initial ground that the Germans are trying to take, but can, can they hold uh, the ground um, that they do take? So that is what drew me towards the game. It's also Ted Racer. Um, and yeah, Battle of the Bulge. So I plan on getting this on the mat or on the table uh, after Ukraine 43. Actually, let me take a quick look. Speaking of uh, victory conditions, I imagine it's some combination of um, geographical hexes and casualties, but let me double check here before I let you go. So the Germans score one VP for each VP hex, marking out the orange. Yeah, so it's essentially they get a victory point. They get a victory point for, basically, they just only need to have a handful of cities. So basically, if I'm reading this right, uh, I won't go too much into it. But yeah, it's it's either victory hexes or uh, on su or in supply mechanized steps off the board, which um, is is fairly common for, for victory um, conditions for uh, our dense games. Anyway, so that was just a brief, um, hopefully informative unboxing for Ted Racers: The Deadly Woods. Uh, by Revolution Games. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you soon.